we work real hard and we put a lot of sweat equity into everything we do. Yeah. Uh, to me, if you're going to start a company, that is a very important thing that you have to understand. If you want to, if you want to get to chapter 10 to somebody else's chapter 10 right off the bat, you're probably going to fail yeah. because you're not seeing yeah. what chapter one was all about. And our chapter one was a lot of work. Hey, y'all, this is the Fishing Business Podcast. Glad you're here. I'm Angie Thompson. I'm your host. And today I'm going to introduce you to an inventor. Now, I, I've had a lot of feedback and, and, and gotten some messages from people who want to be in the fishing industry with a product that they want to bring to market. And so I thought it would be um, interesting for them and anybody in the fishing industry to find out a little bit more about how you do that. How, if you had a great idea for a product that you thought would sell to the fishing market, how in the world would you go about getting it done? So I was introduced to a gentleman in Tulsa, Oklahoma, who is a full-time firefighter, but he invented a product and he is selling it out of his garage at the moment, but actually currently in the, in the process of building offices because it has been so successful. And he's got a great story about how he did this, how he took it from an idea in his head to selling to the point that now he's building his own offices. So this is going to be a great episode with Jake Rutledge. The product is called Chill and Reel, and it's a koozie that you can fish with. You're going to love this, y'all. Here we go. It's going to be good. Jake, we've never met in person, but we have a mutual friend who is also a firefighter in Tulsa and an incredibly uh, avid angler. Are you an avid angler like Sean Lawless is? I used to be. Uh, once I started this business, it's it's really slowed down my fishing. And uh, I love to fish. I would love to fish even more. And I'm hoping I can finally uh, hire more people. And that way I can go out and, and be the one on all the videos. Yeah. And, well, I and love that. that. I love that. And that's, you know, cause you know what that means? That means you're successful, man. So let's set it up for our audience here. Uh, what your, what, what your company name is what, and your product is. Okay. It is, it's chill and real. And it is a hand line fishing reel on the one? side of a solid shell drink insulator. That's so fantastic. Hold that up. Hold that up higher so we can really see it. That's fantastic. Okay. How did you come up with this? Well, we were down in Florida on vacation and there was a group of people from the Sand Springs area. We all played baseball together or coached baseball together. And we went down and we were sitting out in the water between games uh, we had, we had played that day and we were waiting for the next day's games. And we all went out and we were just hanging out in the water and I looked down and there was fish everywhere. Well, we were all drinking a beer or a soda, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, anyway, uh, I looked down and I was like, man, I got to catch those fish. Uh, and my buddy said, man, if you bring a rod out here, you're going to make everybody upset. I, there's, a thousand people out here in the water. And if you bring a rod out here, you're just going to, you're going to get everybody riled up. And I said, Hey, watch this. Well, I had a koozie that my, my drink was in. So I put some line on the bottom in the hole and wrapped it around my can. And I would go out there and pitch it out, catch a fish and reel it in. And I kept spilling my drink everywhere and I couldn't cast it. I had yeah. to pull all the line off, throw it out, catch a fish and and I kept spilling my drink. So when I came home, my dad was actually down there with us. And he said, man, you need to figure out a way to put that on your koozie. Right. And I said, well, if I do that, it's, you know, I said, that's a lot of painstaking time and effort. And he said, well, then patent it. And I said, man, if I, I said, it costs a lot of money to patent it. And I'm not, I'm not the business guy. You know, and he said, well, I'll tell you what. He said, 
if if you want to go through with it, he said, I think you got an idea. And he said, I'll cover the patent for you, you know, and yeah. you can pay me back if you make it. And if you don't, don't worry about it. Okay, so, I want to stop thought, you right there. Okay, yeah. there's a couple of things I want to cover off. I want to explain to our audience that who may not understand that when you're at the beach in Florida, especially the Florida Panhandle, there's a lot of fishing down here. I love surf fishing, and I'm sure you do too, Jake. But during the height of tourist season, it's hard, people get a little upset about you fishing where they're out there trying to swim. So yes. like people will come up to you and say, my kid's going to step on your hook or, or they'll say you're attracting, my favorite is you're attracting sharks, Yeah, <laughs> which is hilarious to me. Cause I'm like, yeah, this little fish gum is not attracting anything. That's not already there, ma'am. Right. You know? <laughs> so the idea is really ingenious because you can actually kind of uh, low key, fish without anybody really kind of knowing that that you are. And then the other thing that I wanted to point out was um, you're a firefighter by you have a full time job as a firefighter. So coming up with inventing something new like this and then having the, you know, whatever it is that make that allowed you to say, I'm going to do this is just an incredible thing. There's, There's not a lot of people that would take the step that you took to say, I'm going to take this to market. So I commend you for that. I think it's inspiring. I think the audience will be inspired by it here too. And so the next question is, how much does it cost to patent something? Oh, for me, a whole lot because I didn't do enough research. <laughs> really? Okay. Um, tell us about that. And, well, I'll tell you, I had a friend who, uh, who has like 50 patents and he told me a patent should run anywhere from four to $6,000. Okay. So that's what I expected. And I spoke with an attorney uh, that was a uh, 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 patent attorney. And he told me, he said, yeah, they normally run about $6,000. And I went, I went with them Mm -hmm. and uh, about $20,000 later, I had a patent. Wow. And so was they, that attorney the one who was helping you get the patent? Yes. Well, and why did I, he mislead you or? Well, he just, he, he basically said they normally cost about 6000 We need 5000 up front. And I gave him 5000 and then it went uh, from this, from that 5000 he wanted more money. He needed more money. He needed more money. Oh, and he had me on the hook. So I recommend if you are going to invent anything and you are going to try to get a patent on it, get a, get a price and sign, sign off on a contract that says, this is what I will do your patent for. Okay. And was there, was then, there a good excuse for why he needed more money? Well, they, the, the deal is, uh, when you get a patent, it, you, you submit your patent and then when it comes back, they either accept or deny when they deny, they will go in and tell you why they deny it. And you can resubmit resubmissions cost more money. And, oh. and I understand that. So we did our patent the first time. We got denied. It cost me another four thousand. Did but they tell we you all, why? Yes, they explained why. Um, but the the six thousand up front ended up being almost ten thousand wow. at first. So they denied the patent. We go in, we resubmit the patent, and they come back and deny the patent again, almost for the same reasons that they denied it for the first time. Oh my gosh. And then we resubmit it again. Well, each one of those resubmissions was between three and four. Years. Yeah. So, so you, we said end up the, at, you said at the onset, you said I would do a little more research. Could you have prepared yourself for why the submission wasn't approved? No, not not so much in that. It's just more more or less it's okay. I would talk to more attorneys right okay. now and say okay so if this gets denied and we have to resubmit it how much does that cost so it's the you know? attorney that's charging you the extra four thousand it's correct. not the u.s patent office no correct it's the uh, t- the attorneys I and see. 
you know, I, I've spoken with attorneys now and it's four thousand or five thousand dollars for your first submission. And then they talk like it's fifteen hundred if it gets denied and we have to reapply. But it, so, does, it does seem like that might be something that you could set out at the beginning and say, hey, let's get into an agreement together that each resubmission would only would cost. And let's agree what that price is now. Yes, absolutely. Right. And well, that's, that's and, right. and you have to remember 98% of all patents get denied on the first submission. Why? Because they find loopholes. And I'm going to tell you, business owner, uh-huh. <laughs> as a business owner, it's attorneys making other attorneys money. Ah, I see. Okay. That's all that it is. Yeah. That makes, you know, that makes uh, that there makes is sense. nothing, nothing really that, that changed in mind other than minor detail that mm-hmm. that everything a little tighter of a window you know and they threw out stuff like a button on a a koozie that they could hook onto a holster and they oh. said well that could be portrayed as a spool no it's a uh-huh. button <laughs> You know, so so you have to be very, very specific. And and if I don't, you know, I'm not I'm not uh, defending them, (laughs) but um, you do want if it's going to be patented to be fair, you do want it to be pretty specific and and different than than something else that's already out there. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And the fishing part of it to me was very specific. Mm -hmm. Because there wasn't anything out there that was for fishing. And that is strictly what this is for. This isn't to hook it on your belt. It's it's not anything like that. It is a drink insulator that you can fish with. So let me let me get inside your head a little bit. How what was the thought process? Why didn't you try to sell it? Did you try to sell it first before you went and got patented? How did you know it was it would make it would sell? So the first step I did, I had a, a friend who had patented a few things. Uh, that's a fireman. Uh, he had a he had a company called Mike's Pro Lids, and he told me he said you don't want this getting out until you have a patent pending on it. He said uh, he said go out. I went and had an engineer, a kid that played baseball for me uh, from the time he was ten. 12 years old until he was out of college. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he helped me design this. Well, he went and had a 3D print made of it. Ah. And he said, take it down, to, take it down to Florida, go out on the beach with it for one hour and see what kind of reaction people give you. Mm-hmm. So I did that and I had like 50 people come up to me wanting to buy it from me right there. And I was like, I've got something. I've got something. So, yeah. When was this, Jake? That was in 2017, four years ago. Oh, so not so really fairly, really recent, I think. I mean, that's not a oh, long yeah. time. No, we've actually been in business for a full in June, it will be, or I'm sorry, in July, it'll be a full two years that we've actually been selling. Yeah. Okay. So how long did the patent process take? Once it was, once you first submitted, got your lawyer and first submitted, how long did that take? Well, uh, (laughs) we started the patent process and it took us a little over two years to get our patent. Wow. Uh, we, we actually started selling, uh, the summer before we got our patent, we started selling July the 20th of 2019, and we got our patent June the 14th of 2020. What made you, what was happening that made you confident to go out and start selling? Um, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> right, but, but could you say patent we, pending at that point? Did you feel like it absolutely. was once, once they send it to the patent office, you are patent pending. Oh, gotcha. And okay. And I wanted to go out before I started. I had put a lot of money into it already before. I say a lot of, a lot of money for someone who doesn't actually own a business, just right. a guy going out. Yeah. I had put a lot of money into it, and yep. I had to go out and see if it would sell. 
And so we went out and started selling it while we were on vacation, kind of like guerrilla marketing. We were just out fishing where there was a lot of people and we're selling them out of a backpack. Wow. Now, okay. So were you, is this primarily, do you think this is primarily in saltwater markets or it, no. people in freshwater buy it too? No, uh, definitely freshwater buy it too. Uh, we, we have sold, uh, Texas is our biggest state that we sell in, mm-hmm. uh, which it's one of the biggest states yep. and there's a lot of, a lot of beer drinking fishermen out there. That's right. Uh, but we, uh, we sell a lot, a lot in fresh water because people, anyone that hangs out at the lake, they love them. Yeah. Because they're they're out just playing with their kids or hanging out and and when they stop their boat, they'll pitch it over and 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 catch a fish while they're just hanging That's out. Fantastic. Okay. Is it do you think it's sold and did you did you plan it? Did you position it as a novelty item, a gift a, a novelty gift item, or as like, you know, serious fisherman stuff here? Well, a buddy of mine told me that that it's it's definitely not a novelty. Quit calling it a novelty. Okay. I always call it a novelty. Okay. Uh, it's because it actually works. And yeah. he said, novelties don't work. They're just there for, for the funny, the funny part of it. Right. Uh, but yes, it, it's a novelty that works. Uh, and it's, it's just something to have a good time with. Mm-hmm. You know, we, I use it every time I go fishing now because we're trying to get video and everything. But I did this. I created this because I enjoyed it. It was something where I could just go out and have fun with. It's not serious uh, for the serious fishermen. Or I know that if I'm going to really go out and I'm trying to catch a mess for dinner, I'm, I'm not using this. But when I'm just out hanging out and having a good time, this is a blast. Right. Uh, We just had our record broke the other day. Uh, a guy sent us the video and he sent us pictures. He, uh, the, the biggest fish we had caught was a 16 pound blue cat on it. And this guy went out and he caught a 35 inch steelhead, uh, salmon on it. Holy cow. And he, he caught it. He sent us pictures and videos, which we always recommend, you know, if you can catch one bigger Make sure you got it on video and we'll send you hats, T-shirts, you know, oh, yeah. if you can catch one bigger. Uh, so uh, it's a lot of fun. And that's that's all that's all it's about. It's yeah. not serious. It's a yeah. lot of fun. We just we're here to to have a good time. OK, so your your buddy did a 3D printer, which those are just amazing. But he did it. He did a he did a prototype with a 3D printer. Yes. And so then how did you get it into production? How did you figure out how to get it actually manufactured? From the time that I got the 3D print, I it took me six months to find someone that would actually make them for me. How were you looking? Uh, were you just blind was, calling was, on people? I was looking at injection mold companies around the Tulsa area. Oh, okay. Uh, and I went through and would wait for four weeks. I would talk to a guy and he'd be like, oh, yeah, this is great. And then he'd come back and say, well, we'll only do them if you'll sign a contract saying you will order 100,000 of them at a time. Because they have to make a, a mold, right? Yes. No, I have to make the mold. Oh, wow. They, they'll they make it, but I have to pay for it. Yeah. Now, and, have, and have a minimum order of 100000 Yes. Holy cannoli. Yes. So that went on for about four or five injection mold companies. And finally, I was at the fire station and a guy traveled over to work at my station for the day. And he goes, man, have you talked to my uncle? And I was like, no, who's your uncle? And he said, well, my whole family owns an injection mold company. And he gave me their name. And I went over to Royal Vista Plastics and talked to them and said, look, your nephew told me to come over here. I've got a product. And lo and behold, he had a product that was very similar or that was that that fit in conjunction with mine. And he was like, oh, yeah, I'll make it. (laughs) And. So we started out and we've had a a good partnership since then. Well, that's great. So then how did you get retail distribution? Uh, 
actually online is where most of our distribution is. We have about a hundred uh, mom and pop stores and, and stores that uh, uh, have called us wanting to sell our product. And like I said, uh, nationwide, we've only got about a hundred stores. Yeah. Uh, but online is where our big market is. Okay. That wow. That now that's okay. That's a whole nother. I didn't realize that you're all, mostly. So did you? Who did you? How did you get your website made? Okay. I started out making a website on GoDaddy.com. Right, like we all try to do. And absolutely. So uh, last year when COVID hit. Uh, we have a news channel six up here has, has one reporter and her name is Tess Bonnie. Mm -hmm. Uh, she did a story on my chill and reel. I had mm -hmm. called her and said, Hey, I've got a product. I would love to send you some and just give me some idea on, on what you think. And she said, I would love to do a story on it. And I told my wife, I said, man, you know, she went out, she came and went fishing with us and did a story. And she's a big outdoors woman. And um, she, and I told her, I said, I told my wife, I said, I wish, I, I hope we can get a hundred sales out of this or sell a hundred chilling reels. Right. And that would be great. I mean, now that we were so excited, you know, just because yeah. we didn't have any shows to go to because of COVID and it was really slow and she did the story and by literally it started at 5 30 in the morning and i woke up at 5 45 and had 60 orders on my phone oh and i was my like whoa gosh. and then the story ran again at 7 30 and by the time you by the time it was over i was up for 24 hours straight writing out all of the orders that were coming in because we didn't even have a system set up for that. And so you weren't using like Shopify craziest. or anything like that. No. You, just, you just had a website that said, if you order it, it basically sent you an email and said, yes. Oh my gosh, Jake, I cannot <laughs> imagine that must have been, I mean, I'm sure you were thrilled to death, but it created a whole new part oh, of your job. Panic. Yeah. panic set in because I didn't know. I mean, yeah, I'm I'm a fireman. I'm not a businessman. I'm a fireman, and now I'm a businessman. You are a businessman, my friend. At at that point, we were we were just you know this was just a fun side deal you know that we mm -hmm. were just wanting to get our money back on. Yeah, yeah. And then it blew up, and uh, you know when she did that, my brother in law had been in the marketing uh, the the marketing world for years, mm -hmm. and he was. He was working for one company, but kind of between them and between jobs. But he used to own a big marketing firm before that. And he had sold it off. And he said, hey, let me help you. And I said, great. You know, well, he built a brand new website on Shopify. And uh, he just, he did all, all that stuff. And he said, hey, let me advertise for you. And I said, okay. I said, well. Uh, I'm going to put a hundred dollars toward um, advertising on Facebook and Instagram. Right. And he said, okay. He, so right. I put it in there and that day we had like $400 in orders. And I was like, wow, you know, I did a hundred dollars for the week and got 400 today. This is great. I, this never worked before. And he said, yeah, we might want to advertise tomorrow. And I was like, we were, I put a hundred dollars. He goes, no, I used all that day. <laughs> and I said, do, do what? Oh, that's and great. so lo and behold, we just kept advertising and, and it kept building our advertising budget. Mm -hmm. And, you know, before long, we, we just kept making, making more and more sales. And he said, are you okay with this? And I said, shoot, yeah, I'll spend a million dollars advertising if I can make two million. Yeah. Right, right. Well, and that's what I was so, going to ask you. I was I was speaking with a um, a mom and pop company a, a week or so ago, and they were asking me, they were like, how do you, you know, how do you figure out what you should allocate budget wise to marketing? You know, they didn't say it that succinctly, but they were like, we can't figure out how much to spend on on advertising. Um, did you say, did you say, did you put aside and say, if I, if I can sell X amount 
I'll put X percent of that into more marketing? No, I, d- I didn't. And the reason I didn't is it's this is a new product. It's yeah. not a it's there's nobody out there that has what I have right now. So I am not working, uh, you know, let me see. Uh, competition is bad, but competition is also good because if there's competition, other people are marketing the same type of product that you have. You just have right. to make yours better. Yeah. Uh, with yeah. this, I don't have any competition that's marketing and I'm just trying to get my product out there known. Uh, right. right now, you know, it, it could be anywhere. I mean, I've heard a lot of people say 10% should always go to marketing. Uh, you know, my, my, uh, bookkeeper accountants that I had said, Hey, you know, if you're spending 40% on marketing, that's fine right now because you have to get your product out. So I don't know what the number is. There's not a magic number. It depends on what you're to me, what you're happy with, uh, and trust me, what I spend on marketing scares the ever living crap out of me at times. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. I'm sure it does. Uh, are you? I mean, I, maybe I shouldn't ask this, but are you? Are you profitable yet? We have. Uh, we were profitable in our first year. Fantastic! Uh, Congratulations. We had covered all of our costs and and. Uh, turned it over in the first year, but you have to also remember most companies are not like that. Yeah. Uh, everything that I do, I was taught to be tighter than bark on a tree, uh, <laughs> from, from a young age. And, uh, we work real hard and we put a lot of sweat equity into everything we do. Yeah. Uh, to me, if you're going to start a company, that is a very important thing that you have to understand. If you want to if you want to get to chapter 10, to somebody else's chapter 10, right off the bat, you're probably going to fail yeah. because you're not seeing what chapter one was all about. And our chapter one was a lot of work. Yeah. Uh, it has been. And even though we were profitable in year one, there was a lot of work behind it. And it was, I mean, my whole family, I don't have anybody outside of my family working in my company yet. Yeah, really? Every, everybody is, is it's either my son, my nephew, my brother-in-law, uh, you know, my brother, we're building offices in his old baseball complex. So it is, it is all family oriented. And So what have been, can you talk about a, a big break that came your way? Test money was the biggest break we've had. What uh, was that? Test money, the news channel oh, the news. Six okay. story. That was the biggest break that we've had. It turned the corner for us. And not only was it just in sales, it allowed my brother-in-law to see that, you know, everybody laughed whenever I showed this. I mean, I'm a fireman. Mm-hmm. If if you want to get the negative reactions about what you're doing, just go to the fire station. They'll tell you all about <laughs> everything. You can ask Sean Lawless, our, our buddy. He was teased and harassed about doing the Lawless Tide oh, uh, wow. YouTube. Yeah. I mean, and we had guys at the fire station that said, please let us know whenever you sell more product than he has followers. Oh. <laughs> so that way we can give him crap about it. You know, that's, that's fireman way. Right. Um, so the, the thing is, everybody is always hitting you up, telling you what you're doing wrong. Yeah. Well, when the test money thing came up, my brother-in-law saw it. He was questionable on what I had until we I mean, we started getting sales like crazy at that point. Mm -hmm. And he was like, wow, that's pretty interesting. And then that's what got the ball rolling with him. And it's just been huge for us. So I would say that if we had one big break, that's it. 
That was it. Yeah. And you, and you made that break happen because you, you know, you said, I'm not a business person, but really Jake, man, you're like, you're an operations guy. You're an inventor. You do the research and development. You do the marketing, you do the PR, you do all of the operations and that what you did by calling her, that was a PR move. I mean, that's what PR agents do. So was that just, I mean, were you like just kind of sitting around brainstorming on how can I get to the get get to the next level and I ought to reach out to my local sportscaster? Well or newscaster? Yes and no. I was sitting, I was sitting at home one night pouring pouring sinkers that I that mm-hmm. I put in them. And by mm-hmm. the way, I still pour all the sinkers that go into really. Yes. Uh, but I was pouring those and and I was like, man, I gotta figure out a way. I got to figure out some way to get this out there. And I, I've watched her noodle on, you know, oh, yeah. she's a big noodler. Yeah. And yeah. I watched her noodle and I thought, you know what? And a buddy of mine works for the Oklahoma Department of Wildlife. And he said, you ought to get that in Tess Monty's hands. So that lo and behold, one night I was just like, you know what? I'm going to get, a, I'm going to try to get a hold of her. And she just lives right down the road from me on the lake. But I don't know where she lives. Nobody knows where she lives. It's a secret, top secret deal. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. anyway, we went out and 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 uh, it, it was just great. I mean, everything about that was great. That's fantastic. I just I love all of everything about this whole story, really, uh, because I feel like you're going to keep going. I mean, it's you know, it's it, it, it's a it's a great success story now. But I feel like in a year we're going to be revisiting uh, because you're probably going to have quit the fire department and bought a big mansion down here, waterfront mansion with all of your profit from chilling real. But and I hope you do. But um, well, I hope I do, too. <laughs> well, so and that was the other thing I was going to ask you. How is your wife? Um, what's your wife's name? Trinity. It's how has St. Trinity been <laughs> about, about handling all of this? Well, it's, it's good. You know, she, she's all about it. Uh, our 20 year reunion or our 20 year anniversary is coming up this year mm-hmm. and we are planning on going to the keys uh, cause we've never been there. Yeah. And that's supposed to be like the greatest fishing in the world. Oh Yeah. And so we've got to go down there and, and try to catch some tarpon on a chilling reel. Oh, yeah. That's crazy. And Sean says it can't happen. So we, well, that, we've got to go and prove him wrong. If you do that, I hope you have that on video, my friend. I want to see, I oh, want yeah. to see that. <laughs> Absolutely. But I mean, did, but she no, take, did, did she take convincing to say, hey, let's put some energy into this? Nope. Nope. And whenever, whenever she saw she was there the whole i mean through the whole thing she saw that uh the people's reaction mm-hmm. and uh even before that she was like hey let's let's make a go of it if you yeah. really think that it'll work and i said i don't know if it'll work or not i'm just you know yeah. i'm flying by the seat of my pants here yeah but you know we had uh we've we're, we're both civil servants she's been a teacher i've been a fireman ever since we were married um and it was kind of one of those deals where i had been mowing yards i i I was working remodeling houses uh trying to get rental properties built up and uh it was kind of one of those things where we just went out on a step of faith and said hey if this is meant to be it's meant to be but we're going to go and we're going to jump in with both feet get after it I love it. I love your confidence and I love your belief in yourself. You know, uh, maybe it's a fireman thing, but that um, I'm very, very impressed by that. Okay, I'm going to take a quick break here, right here for a second, Jake. And and we'll be right back with Jake Rutledge of Chillin' Real on the Fishing Business Podcast. Hey, if you're enjoying this podcast, check out fishingbusinessschool.com where you can see video uploads of the podcast, as well as my blog, where I give you more practical advice on the business side of fishing. Fishingbusinessschool.com. Come see me over there. We're back on the Fishing Business Podcast with Jake Rutledge from Chillin' Reel. And once I want you to hold it up one more time, Jake, and kind of show people what the product is. It's a koozie with a reel on it. And where does the where does the line the line actually spools around the little thing and then you hand line off of it, right? Yes. All you do is you just point the spool in the direction you want to pitch it, pitch it out, get you some slack. You can drink your drink. 
you get a bite, you make sure you jerk with this hand. That way they don't pull it out of your hand. Yeah. You're, you're, you're fighting them here and you're just reeling, yeah. reeling in there. Now, um, when you said earlier that you pour the sinkers, does it come with a, a hook and a sinker on it? It does. It comes. It comes with a, a number six hook and a quarter ounce sinker. Uh, we bag those up. I've got my youngest boys that bag all of those up, and uh, we send them over to get put in. And uh, it, it's good for panfish and yeah. you know just fishing out uh, for smaller stuff. Now, do you? Uh, anytime- you do all of the fulfillment. So you have to package it up and mail them every time you get an order. Yes. That's a lot of work, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Uh, it depends on the day. You know, yeah. some days we have 100 orders. Some days we have 400 orders. So wow. it just depends on depends on the day. What and, a neat, but uh, that's a family business for you. Are y'all doing it at home? Right now, until our offices get finished, uh, we have to do them at home. Yeah. We have, uh, I'm going over, in fact, I'm going over tonight to, uh, to put the trim down uh, for our offices and put the doors on so we can hopefully get in there in about two weeks. Is anybody full, a full-time employee only, only working for you? My, my oldest son, who's 27, is a full-time employee for me. Uh, I, I have both of my younger sons that uh, do a lot of work for me, uh, but they they've got high school and baseball and all mm-hmm. of that. So uh, they're I couldn't say that they're full time. Uh, and then my brother in law, he does everything marketing wise, uh, internet wise, uh, takes care of all of our advertisement. Uh, and and he is full time. He is not actually my employee. He has his own marketing firm right. but we are right now his one employee oh, yeah. his one uh, client yes yeah, his one client. I uh, yeah love that. there you go his one client right well I, uh, that's great so i you know i usually do at the end of the podcast i'll do what i think were key takeaways from the conversation for people and one of the things that i would i wrote down earlier was um you know, to follow up on all your hunches, because when you had a hunch that you could call that newscaster and that might, um, you know, that might benefit your brand, but boy, that was a huge step. And you just had the intuition to do that, right? Yes, absolutely. Uh, The one thing that I would say, as far as if you're looking to get into business, Mm -hmm. you, you cannot you have number one. You have to have thick skin. Right. Everybody, no matter if it's your family, no matter if it's your friends, everybody is going to tell you it can't happen. Yeah. You know because everyone wants safety and security. Right. But you never make it big if you try to play it safe. Yeah, I love and, that. But you're right. There's something about human nature that w- that. Wants, I guess, because like you said, everybody wants safety and security for themselves. And if they, you know, if they're a friend of yours, they want safety and security for you too. And I've, I've been in the same situation where I have said, this is what I want to do. And I've had people give me a lot of reasons why it won't work. Yes, absolutely. And just go for it. Uh, this is probably the fourth, the fourth thing that I have came up with. And I never went with the other three. And all of the other three are now selling in Bass Pro Shop. Really? Somebody else invented them? Absolutely. Interesting. And, and I had all of them years and years before they did. I was using the same product yeah. that I had made for myself, but I was afraid to go out and step out and do it. Yeah. Uh, right. But this time it was like, you know what? I'm doing my it. Dad, my dad believes in me with this product. Yeah. And if my dad believes in me, when I grew up, that was the one guy that I had to impress. I mean, that's the only person I cared about impressing. Yeah. You know, yeah. Gr- growing up, my dad was it. He was he was Superman. He was the hero. And if I can impress him, and when he told me, hey, I believe this much in you on this, then I thought, I can't lose. Right. That's you know, right. so I, that's when I took off. 
Uh, do you, do you think you'll he, develop? He believes. Do you think you'll develop other products to go along with this? Do you have any plans along those lines? We do. Good. We've got you, uh, we've got about three or four different things in R and D right now. Great. Uh, and we're just trying to build our brand and and go from there. That's fantastic. I'm glad, really glad to hear that. I think you are special. I think you're a, I think you're a special guy, and and I want you to keep following your dreams because I mean, like I've said, since we started talking, you're special because you believe in yourself and there's, I wish more of us could believe in ourselves. But the other thing is, you know, and, and what I'm learning with my business is you just, a lot of it is just, man, you just have to work really hard. Yes. Yeah. You, you can't to, to be successful, you can't cut corners. Right. Uh, if if you if you think that you're going to go out and and, you know, get from point A to point B and it's going to be shorter for you than it was for anybody else, you're you're nuts. Yeah, that's right. You, know, you just better dig your heels in and and figure, hey, I'm in it for the long haul. So what I have to do right now is the things that nobody else will do. Because yeah. if I do them now, I will be able to do the things nobody else can do later on. Yeah. Oh, that's great. So. I'm going to have to write that down too, Jake. You're <laughs> awesome, man. Okay. I'm going to put uh, links in the show notes to how you can find Jake and how you can find the Chillin' Reel. And and I'll certainly link to the website for sure. I'm going to go right over and buy some as soon as we hang up because I think they're so cool to have. And Jake, I hope that at some point you and me and Sean and some of our other mutual friends can can fish together. Absolutely. All right. I look forward to that. Thank you so much for spending time with us, Jake. I appreciate it, man. Thank you. Now, I'm going to go buy some chilling reels and I want you all to do the same thing. I'm going to, like I said, I want to put a link in the show notes so you can go get one yourself and connect with Jake. All right. My three key takeaways from this episode. Number one, follow up on your hunches, just like we said there uh, just a minute ago. Your intuition is so powerful. And if you just have confidence, you can follow your intuition and it will always take you to great places. So as Jake said, he had some intuition that if he could get his product in front of the local newscaster in Tulsa, Oklahoma, it would be good for him. And boy, was it. It was fantastic for him. So don't be afraid to follow your intuition and follow up on your hunches. All right. The other one is use all of your contacts. Now, I know it might seem like if you were listening at home, you might be going, yeah, you know, he could do it because he knew somebody that had an injection molding plant and he knew somebody that did marketing. But here's the thing. It probably took Jake a long time to get to the point where he knew somebody that did X, Y, and Z, because that's just networking and you can do it too. You may think, I don't know anybody but I bet you do. And if you don't know them, someone you know knows them. So use your network. Make sure everybody, if you're, no matter what you're doing, whatever you want to accomplish, use your network and let people know what your dreams are so they can help you achieve your dreams. All right. Number three, invest in marketing. Now that was a, a, a key takeaway for me from what he just said. He really, his business really took off when he started investing in marketing. And, you know, even if you're just trying to increase your YouTube channel following or your social media channels, you'd be surprised at how far your dollars will go um, to 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 raise your profile and and get you more followers. So don't be afraid to try to invest. I invest in myself all the time, and it's I think it's the best investment I can make because I can control what happens after I make that investment. So when I have the extra funds, I invest in myself. So in and most of the time that's through marketing. All right, y'all. Thanks so much for spending some of your wild and precious life with us here today on the Fishing Business Podcast. I'm going to sign off now the way my favorite fisherman always signed off his television show, The Fishing Hole, by saying this is dedicated to dad because he always had time to take me fishing. See you next time, y'all. 